Hey guys, and welcome to FaithWorks Designs. I'm Faith. So, let's get started. All right guys, so we are working on the card slots. I'm gonna grab two because I have a tendency to grab two when I do this. It just saves me a little bit of time to get two done at once. I'm going to put both of my card slots at a certain point on my board so that I know that they're lined up and it'll be a little easier for me to do all of the measurements as we go along. Now, I will put all of the measurements up on the screen for you guys as we do this. They will also be in the written instructions. You guys watch the video and you're just like, I can't remember the measurements. It'll be in the written instructions. You can grab those um, and that way you'll have them written down somewhere and you don't have to remember them. So the very first one that we're gonna do, and I'm left-handed, so I tend to do everything backwards. You can start at this end, but the top of our card slots are going to be our first mark, and it's going to be three and a half. We're going to measure over three and a half. So I am going to put a T on this one to know that this is the top of my card slot. The next measurement that we're going to use is one and three quarters. So you're going to line it up with the line that you just made. The three and a half mark, we're going to move over one and three quarters. Then we're going to pick up our ruler and we're going to move it over two and a half. So at that one and three quarters line that we just made, we're going to move it over two and a half inches and make a mark. And then we're going to pick it up and move it over from that two and a half inch line. We're going to measure one and three quarters. We're going to pick it up again bring it over at the one and three quarters line right here we're going to measure over two and a half then we're going to pick it up and from that two and a half line we're going to measure one and three quarters i was trying to keep this pretty simple okay this is your bottom and i'm going to show you with two and then i'll do the other two off camera um, but we're going to take one at a time, and the way that we're going to put these together is I got this ruler from um, Sailrite. I was looking for some products on there, and I went ahead and purchased this, and this is the best tool I've purchased in a while because I do so many card slots. <laughs> so what we're going to do is we're going to flip this over, and we're going to use our tool, and you're going to find the very, very first line we're going to make a crease at that very first line and we're going to make sure that this side and this side line up we don't want it looking like this if your mark just happened to like your ruler slipped or something and you know your line is kind of crooked you need to make it even so that it fits like that and they're even on both sides all right again i'm left-handed <laughs> so i'm going to flip it over here my fold is right here now I'm going to line up my metal ruler with this first line. Now if you want, you can do this at the ironing board and just press all of this down as you're doing it. It's up to you. Um, I normally just do it with a finger press and go from there. Alright, so we're going to get this tail in. We're going to push it over and then I'm just going to press it with my fingers. And then we're going to come back and bring the fabric back over until we see that next line. We're gonna make a fold on that next line. Then I'm gonna take my ruler out, holding everything down and nice and flat so it doesn't go crazy. And I'm gonna put it at the next line. Then I'm gonna take my tail end fabric, fold it over, take my tail end fabric, find the next line and then press then I'm going to make sure that all of this is lining up correctly make sure the top and the bottom I'm going to take my ruler out push it down on the next line and then fold it over again 
Again, all of this is going to be in the written instructions, all of the measurements, everything that I'm doing. I took detailed pictures of each step for you. Next thing that we got to do is we got to check and make sure that with our folds all done, and I know it's hard to see with my big hand the way, but I'm trying to hold it still. Um, we got to count one, two, three, four, five and a half and a quarter. So your card slots, when they're all folded, need to be five and three quarters tall. If they're not five and three quarters tall, you need to shift them around a little bit to make sure that they're that measurement. But if you did the measurements the way that you, they were supposed to be, they should be five and three quarters. But sometimes when I'm doing card slots, like one side will go up or they'll kind of like slip up as I'm folding the fabric back and forth. You just need to make sure that they are five and three quarters tall. Now I'm going to move the camera and I'm going to do that again a little closer up. So hopefully you'll be able to tell what I'm doing. All right, let's do this one more time. So you're looking at the back with all of your measurements. I'm going to flip it over. I'm going to find that first line and I'm going to press it down at that first line. And then I'm going to take it this way. So the fold is on that side, this side right here. I'm going to take my ruler and I'm going to put it on that first line right here. And then take your tail and then fold it over and press it with your fingers. Take the tail again back the other direction to the right and we're going to find the next line and we're going to make a fold at that line making sure that right here and right here stays straight. If your lines are off a little bit, it's okay. We just need to make sure that it's straight. <laughs> we don't want your card slots being crooked. All right, so put your roller at the next line, fold it over, press it, fold it back over until you see the next line. Get your roller, put it on the next line. And then before you move on, let's measure it. So there's one inch, two, three, four, five, five and a half and three quarters. So we want to make sure it's five and three quarters. And then you're just going to clip it in place. Now we're going to go to the sewing machine. And what I like to do is I like to top stitch my card slots. It just gives it a little finished look. You can do it without finishing the tops and that's completely fine. It's up to you. Um, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this top part and fold it back underneath and then top stitch. And then I'm going to take this part, fold it underneath and top stitch and do that for all three of the card slots. So let's go do that. All right, so I have got all four of my card slots ready to go. I tend to do a lot of my stuff um, kind of like assembly line, um, putting things together, because it saves me a whole lot of time. Um, that's why I do a lot of batch sewing um, like this. And what we're going to do is I've got my stitches at a two and a half. We're going to take this top part and push it back. And we're just going to stitch along. I am not going to back stitch because my machine wants to eat my fabric. So I'm not sewing them together. I'm just sewing them back to back like that. There's a little bit of space in between the two. Now I'm going to put my flat back to the front. I'm going to move my clips like that and then I'm going to take these two and push them back out of the way and then I'm going to top stitch this one. Pushing that back out of the way.
Alright. For the sake of the video not being 9 million years long, I'm going to go ahead and do the first two. I'm going to pull all of this back. Pulling it back. Now, this is where you're going to want to take it back to your table and make sure that it's measuring five and three quarters. I'm going to grab my little ruler here. Yep. Make sure that it's still measuring because when you're taking the clips off and moving things around, it can get messed up. The next thing that we're going to do is we're going to sew down this side and sew down this side so that our card slots are in, in position and aren't going to go anywhere. We're just basting them in place. You also want to make sure that your card slots haven't shifted and that they're even and they go straight across. So your card slots should look like this. They're nice and in place. They're not going to shift around, move around. They're all basted in place. Now I'm going to go finish the other two that I've got and then we'll go to the next step. All right. So we're at the next step. We've got all of our card slots done. Um, I've got my four and an eighth by five and three quarters uh, red pieces. And what we're going to do is we're going to put right side to right side on the right side. <laughs> And we're going to sew a quarter of an inch um, along the edges with a 2.5 seam allowance. So we'll make sure that we backstitch. And again, I'm going to go ahead and I'll do two at a time and do the other two off camera. Um, that way I can just kind of repeatedly do it. But normally I like to do these all at one time. Alright, after you get the right side on, we're going to open it up and press it with our fingers or you can take it to the ironing board and press it, it's up to you. We're just going to top stitch an eighth of an inch away from the edge where the red and the card slots meet. <laughs> So now you can see what it looks like. Now we're going to put the other, we're going to grab another one and we're going to put it on the left side. So you want them on both sides of your card slot. Once you got the other side sewn on, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to press it down and then an eighth of an inch top stitch. And I don't know if you guys noticed or not, but I went ahead and I changed my thread. I did my um, card slots in one top thread and then my insides in another top thread. Um, I started out doing them all in like the gray so I didn't have to continuously change thread out. And it just looks so much nicer 
changing my thread. So I'm just going to, that's what I'm going to do. If you don't want to change your thread out, you don't have to, it's up to you. So this is what it should look like. You're going to need to take this to your sewing table and make sure that it's 11 and a half wide by five and three quarters tall. All right. So we're going to take the piece that has our card slots and we're also going to take the piece that is five and three quarters tall. Yeah. 11 and a half wide. I had to check myself. And what you're going to do is we're going to put these two together at the very bottom. So you see your card slots are going up like this. This is going to be your bottom. So we're going to put the red and the bottom together. I'm just going to visually center it with a two and a half stitch length at a quarter of an inch seam allowance. We're going to sew those together. stitched at both my ends so that I don't have a problem with them coming apart later and then I am going to pull this back and kind of press it with my fingers and then we're going to top stitch at an eighth of an inch from where the seam is I've got my seam facing the red side not the card slots hopefully you can see that here's the seam it's facing this way and then I'm just going to go ahead and top stitch it. Alright, go ahead and do the other three and get them ready to go. And then we'll go to the next step. Alright, so now we're going to be prepping our next step. The panel that goes inside of our letter. You're going to just grab one of your gray panels. <clears throat> the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to measure two and a half inches over and one and a half inches down. We're going to do that on all four sides. Um, you can do this with one or two things. You can use a regular magnetic snap. Our letter is on the front and we want it to kind of snap together so that it snaps down back and forth so that the letter can kind of like pop open um, so you're you would actually need to put if you're going to do regular magnetic snaps it's actually going to have to go on this panel and you'll see the snaps um, on the outside where your wording is so take that into consideration I am going to be using these invisible magnets um, or sew-in magnets I should say um, I found out that these are really good when I started doing the Alice bags. I had some sew-in magnets that weren't very good. Um, they didn't handle very well during um, or working with vinyl. And so I found these and they're actually like really strong. I don't, I don't want to put them together because I can't get them apart. <laughs> all right, so our panel is all marked up and ready to roll. Next thing that we're going to do is we're going to grab our magnets. We're going to have a left and a right. And what we're going to do is we're going to take and put a left here, a right here, a left here, a right here. So that when we close this up, the left and the right, because we're folding this in half, we're going to be taking this gray fabric and we're going to be, it's going to be folding up like this onto our letter so that when we open it up, we'll see the Ronald Weasley letter. Um, so we need two lefts and two rights. And I'm just going to show you how I put them on. So we've got one side that's plain and then the other side has the left and the right. You're going to want to make sure that this is facing up so that when we flip it the right way, um, they'll magnetize to each other. What I'm going to do is I'm going to find the corner and I'm going to make sure that the L is as centered as I possibly can get it on my little dot that I made. And then essentially what I'm going to do is I'm going to sew around it. All of these magnets, the sewing ones, have these little holes. There's not a ton of them, but it's not something you can do with your sewing machine either. Um, so it's going to be a little bit of hand sewing and essentially you're not going to really see this too much so I'm not super worried but if you can tell I'm putting most of the thread um, 
extras on this side. Let me get a little bit further so I can show you. When you turn this over, you're not going to see all of this. You're going to see the little teeny tiny places where I grabbed a little bit of the fabric to attach it. So when I turn it around this side, that's all you're going to see. So try and get the least amount of fabric as you can. It really doesn't matter. You don't see it a ton. But if you want to be a little extra, be a little extra. It's up to you. So I'm just going to sew all the way around. And then I, I try and do two little stitches for each hole just to make sure that it's not going anywhere because it kind of is <laughs> hard to get to <laughs> if you've sewn it in. And so it's not really a place that I would want to have to come back and fix. You know what I mean? Like it would be kind of difficult to take the whole thing apart to fix this. So just make sure that you sew it in well when you do it. There are also other sewing magnets that you can get. Um, I just like these better. They seem to magnetize better through fabric. They're really, really strong, um, which is nice. All right, let me, let me get my bearings. Make sure I'm doing this right. Okay, yep. All right, so I've got my left here. Now I need to grab my right and try and center it as much as I can. You could probably use some um, double-sided tape just to kind of make sure that these don't move. I am going to show you guys the right one and then I'm going to fast forward. Well, I'm going to fast forward through the other two. Actually, I'm going to do the other two off camera. And then when I come back, I'll show you how we're going to put the Ronald Weasley panel on. Ooh. Just make sure that you put your two lefts on the top and two rights on the bottom. You don't want to have, you don't want to like mix them up just in case you put the wrong one in the wrong place. I would put two lefts at the top and two rights at the bottom. That way you can just kind of keep up with who is where. Alright, so now we're going to be starting on our zipper, our zippers, our zipper pulls, and our zipper tabs. I wanted you guys to see these because, oh my good gosh. <laughs> they, I'm serious, you guys have got to get these when you make your purse or your wallet. Spoiler. Um, <laughs> because they're so cool. And when you see the finished bag, you'll understand why you have to have these pulls. So, I've got four of my zipper tape that measure eight inches long. And I'm going to show you guys just how easy Kim and Alex's zipper pulls are because they go on so quick. If you're having problems putting zipper pulls on, you need to buy their zipper pulls because bam, just like that. All right, let me show you again how we do this. So we're going to put our left side in first, just a little ways, and then our right side in. And we're going to kind of like looking at the zipper pull, you want to see that your zipper teeth or your zipper edges are kind of the same. That there's not one all the way down here and then one all the way up there. And when you pull it down, you should see that the zipper teeth are pretty even right there. And that lets you know that you did the zipper um, and the zipper pull right. All right, let me do these real fast. Okay, good. So this happened. Do you see how the left side is a little bit higher than the right side? That means you haven't, I haven't done it right. So I got to pull it back a little bit and try again. Sometimes it happens and it's worth stopping and getting it right so that your um, zipper teeth aren't janky the rest of the way down your zipper tape. Why can't I get you straight? All right, there we go. 
All right, so we got all four ready to go. I have already burnt my ends, and that way I don't have to worry about them unraveling. Now, you have a bunch of these little zipper tabs. What you're gonna do is you're gonna fold them in half like this. Open it up, fold it in on that middle piece that you just press with your fingers, and then both sides. And then you're gonna flip this open like that. And you've kind of like made a bias tape. You're gonna put the end of your zipper in there like that. And what I plan on doing is just kind of clipping these together so that I can go to the sewing machine and just kind of do them all at one time. So we're just going to press with our finger, open it up, pull this side and this side, making our bias tape. All right, now that all of these are ready to go, we're gonna take them to the sewing machine. But we're going to do a quick check-in with our ribbon. All right, so I've got my ribbon here. The top of this is well done, it's all done. I went ahead and I did the bottom, and you can see because it's not sewn that it has this like gapping when you're trying to um, edge coat it. And I guess I didn't leave my clips on long enough. But what I was doing was I would do a little bit of edge coat and then I would put a clip on just to hold those edges together. Because if you're using spray adhesive, this will probably work a whole lot better. But if you put the clips on there, it'll kind of keep it closed. Um, and so I think spray adhesive would probably be a better option. But that's just my first coat. I'm going to coat it again, I think, before I do my zippers. So let me go do that, and then we will get to the zippers. All right, so we're on to our zipper tape. I'll put my thread back to a red just so that it wouldn't be like gray on top of red. I've got my stitch length at a two and a half. What I'm going to do is I'm going to sew up a little bit and then back stitch right where the zipper meets um, the, the tab. Just so that, you know when you cut your tabs off, sometimes you can cut that thread and then it can kind of unravel a little bit. I started doing back stitching right where my zipper meets my zipper tape or my zipper tab meets my zipper tape just so that when I cut the ends of my zipper tab my zipper tape doesn't unravel or my zipper tabs don't unravel rather so I'll sew a little bit and I have nylon zippers so I can just sew right over top of them it's no issue at all all right now that we got that done i'm just going to cut these apart and cut that little excess of zipper tape or zipper tab off and you see what I mean when you cut the zipper tab off sometimes the see at the uh, stitches can come undone that's why I like to back stitch mine they may not look like super pretty but they are not coming undone <laughs> I am not having anybody come to me and be like my zipper tabs came undone they look like crap nope we're not having that we don't do that here All right, now that that's done, I'm gonna pull my zipper tape over a little bit. Hopefully you can see what I was doing. All right, next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna take our zipper tabs and we're gonna match up our ends 
And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a little clip into my zipper, into my zipper tape, just a little one. We need to have this for later on. And then just as a little extra, I'm going to burn those because I don't want my zipper unraveling. Do that to all four zippers. All right, so we've got all of our magnets sewn in. The next thing that we need to do is we need to grab our front panel with Ronald Weasley. That was terrible, sorry. Um, what you're gonna do is you're gonna need to find the center mark and then make a clip, a notch, a mark, something. And then you're gonna grab one of your zippers going to make sure that you've got your notches and your zipper so that you can find uh, where you need to match it up at and you need to make sure that your zipper is opening to the right and closing to the left so you can see here opening to the right closing to the left then what I'm going to do is I'm going to match up my middle marks And then I'm going to take this to the sewing machine and I'm going to base stitch this on. All right, now we've got our zipper base stitched on. We made sure that our zipper is facing the right way. We're going to grab our magnetic snap um, gray panel. We're going to put right side to right side and start clipping them together. If you want to, you can make a metal notch and that way you can make sure that you're putting them um, together in the same spot. Okay. I'm just going to put a few on and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my ruler on the left side. You can do it on the left or the right. It does not matter. Um, but we're going to need a hole to turn this inside out. What I'm going to do is I have marked one inch from the top down. I've made a mark and then four inches, hopefully you can see it, four inches down I made another mark. This is going to be so that we can turn our bag inside out or turn our panels inside out. We're going to sew all the way around and then stop at this mark making sure that we back stitch when we start and when we stop so that when we turn it back inside out it will look correct. So let me go do that. All right, so this is going to be a very long video, so I'm trying to break it down as much as I can. Um, I sewed around my edges at a 2.5 with a quarter of an inch seam allowance. I made sure that I left that three inch hole wide open so that we can turn it inside out. What I like to do and what I've been doing is um, getting my corners out and then when I get done, taking this to the ironing board and then just ironing the edges. We don't need the rest of this iron completely flat and all nice looking because we're going to be turning this inside and out and all over the place. So we're just going to need to make sure that our corners are out and that we're going to make sure that our edges are together, especially the sides that's open. We're going to need to push this in a quarter of an inch and then make sure that we iron so that it stays closed like that. I'm gonna go do that real quick and then we'll go to the next step. All right, so I went ahead and I ironed around all of the edges and so the side that's open on this side is nice and pressed closed. It'll be a lot easier for me to be able to um, stitch it closed when it's time. It's not time yet. Don't top stitch. Next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna grab one of these panels um, our card slots and we're going to need to grab another zipper again making sure that your zipper opens to the right close to the left we're going to put right side to right side Okay. 
now what we're going to do is we're going to take this and we're going to base stitch this on. So let's go do that. All right, so that's base stitched on. Next thing that we're going to do is we made, or I made, a center mark in the very bottom of the red panel. You're going to put right side to right side, so the right side of the zipper to the right side of the bottom of the panel. We're going to clip that together. We are also going to base stitch this in place. Um, I highly recommend base stitching everything. The, every time we go to do the next step, you really do need to base stitch because there's going to be more and more fabric involved and more and more to, to have to deal with. And base stitching your stuff in place is really going to help. So um, base stitching is just using like a four stitch length and then just going all the way across like an eighth of an inch to hold everything in place. Um, just like I did Hopefully you can see with that one. I just kind of uh, took a four stitch eighth of an inch away from the edge and then sewed it down. So let me go put, let me go base stitch this in place. All right, so we've got that zipper based in place and we've got this zipper based in place. What we're gonna have to do is we're going to have to fold this over, fold this over, and then pull it up like that out of our way. We do not want to accidentally sew this when we're putting the next panel on. After you've got it folded like this, we're going to get one of our gray panels and we're going to go right side to right side and we're going to clip all the way around. I'm going to start where I base stitched my zippers in and just kind of make sure that those sides are right first, and then I'll do the other sides like that. Now, I have to do a little bit of checking to make sure I'm right. You have to figure out which side has your seam allowance. You're open, so the one that I had before that's open, hopefully you can see it, I want to have my other opening on this side. We're going to try and keep it on the same side just to make it a little bit easier to remember where the open seams are. We have to leave them open because we have to keep rolling. So, um, so we're going to measure four inches up. Let's do it this way. Measure four inches up. One inch up. So you're going to have one inch up, there should be a three inch space right here. That's what we're going to need to leave open so that we can pull this all inside out like that. So I am going to clip the rest of this together. And then I am going to sew this together using a 2.5 stitch length and a quarter of an inch seam allowance. Making sure that you backstitch when you get to this spot. So I'm gonna put a clip there so it'll hold still. All right, let me take, move the camera and get an angle for this. All right, so I have got my stitch length at a two and a half. I am starting at my inch from the edge. I'm gonna make sure that I'm back stitching because I'm gonna be turning my stuff through there and I do not want my stitches coming out. All right, so we've got that all sewed up. I made sure that I left myself a hole to turn it with. I'm going to go around and cut all the corners. We're going to do this with all of them. Um, that way it's easier to turn it inside out and it'll lay nice and flat when we turn everything inside out. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to reach through here and I'm going to pull out that first panel that we put it Maybe. <laughs> Alright, so you're going to want to go ahead and get all of your corners pushed out. And then I'm going to do the same thing that I did to my other one. 
and I'm going to go to the ironing board and I'm just worried about the edges. We're going to be turning this inside out and left side right <laughs> um, with all of these. So it, it's really not going to matter if uh, your panels are ironed flat and good. I just need to iron all of the edges so that this little piece right here, we're going to fold in a quarter of an inch on both the top and the bottom fabric. And if I iron this now, when I come back to sew it later, it'll be so much easier because it'll already be pressed closed and I don't have to keep fiddling with it. So I'm going to go iron that now. As you could probably see, when I was ironing, I was kind of pulling the fabric away from the um, zipper. You want to iron that nice and flat so that when we put all of this together, your fabrics will be away from your zipper because we're not top stitching all of this. Um, you're going to need to do that. So, next thing's next. I'm going to grab one more of these panels and one more zipper. All right, so we got one more panel and one more zipper. I made sure that my zipper is opening from right and closing to the left. I went ahead and I based this just on because I'm trying to save us a little bit of time. <laughs> this is going to be a long one if I don't. All right. Once you have this base stitched on, the next thing that you're going to do is you're going to make sure that you have your clip down at the bottom so that you can match it up with the clip at your top zipper here. So you're going to have your top zipper right there and the very bottom of your fabric is going to meet up with that notch. And we're going to go ahead and clip across the top. So we have got that clipped. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to base stitch this together. All right, so we got our zipper base stitched on. The next thing that we're going to do is we're going to take this bottom layer and put it up. And then we're going to have to fold the corners just like we did before. So fold this corner and fold this corner. And it's going to be a little harder because the magnets are there. And then we're going to fold this up just like we did with the last one. And then we're going to add our other gray panel and we're going to clip all the way across the top and clip all the way across the bottom. Sorry, my camera was like, no more. <laughs> okay. Um, I went ahead and I put the gray on top and I wanted to show you guys this, that I'm trying to keep all of my seams that are open on one side. So again, this one's open, so I'm gonna be leaving this side open. Um, so I'm gonna clip it after I push that back. You really wanna make sure when you're sewing that you're not catching um, that material that's in the middle that we've already sewn together. That's why I kind of tell you to like push it out of the way Because we don't want to accidentally catch it. Okay Now I'm gonna grab my ruler So we're going to measure Where you can't see So we're gonna measure four inches up like we did before and then an inch up so that we still have our opening to turn it inside out. So let's go sew that. So we've sewed all the way around. Now we are going to take out our panel that we sewed last time. So we have got our first panel, our second panel, and our third panel. <laughs> it just keeps going. All right. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to grab another panel, our third, pa our third panel for card slots. Let's put it that way. What we're going to do is we're going to make a middle mark in the center of the top and a middle mark at the center of the bottom too. We want to make sure we have both of those. So we're going to take another zipper with our center marks. The zipper is going to open to the right, close to the left. We're going to put this at the center of our next card slots. And I'm going to go ahead and base stitch this in place because again, there, we've got a lot more fabric 
to work with and it's going to be heavier and it's going to pull more when we're trying to put our layers together. So I am definitely making sure that I base stitch this in place. Alright, so I have got my zipper base stitched onto my card slots. Next thing I'm going to do with all of this <laughs> is I am going to take the bottom part of this one and match it up with my zipper up at the very top. We're going to go ahead and base this, this on. You're going to be doing right side to right side. Okay, and then take this to the sewing machine and go ahead and base that one on as well. If I fail to mention this, I want to mention it now. I have been going around the edges every time we pull it through. I've been going around the edges and just kind of ironing the edges down flat. It's going to make everything else we do so much easier because we're not going around and kind of top stitching everything. So now we have one, two, three, four panels. <laughs> I've got this face it on, I've got this face it on. The next thing that I'm going to do so that you guys can see it is I'm going to take this panel on top of that one and take this panel on top of that one and take this panel on top of that one. <laughs> it's just you're rolling it up and hopefully I did that in the camera where you can actually see it. Okay, so now what I found is the thicker it gets, the harder this is going to get. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to fold it in half like this. And then you are going to have to kind of just get these edges out of the way as best you can when you go to put the next thing on. And this is going to be hard, <laughs> but you can do it. I, what I would do and what I found the easiest is to just take our extra panel, lay it right sides together, and then just kind of clip at your top and clip at your bottom where your zippers are. Just do that first. Worry about that first and then finagle with all of this. So let's do that real quick. So if you look on the side, you can see this side is open, this seam is open, this seam is open. I've managed to be able to keep all of my seams on one side. It's a miracle. Okay, It, it really honestly does not matter. But when you're going to do everything else, it's just easier to remember when I'm doing the edges that all of my seams are all on one side. Doesn't mean I'm going to do it every time. I put my ruler away like I was done. All right, um, let's see, turn this around. So we're going to put it at, let go for a minute, four. You remember, we're going to measure four up. We're going to make a mark. And then one inch up. So you're going to have a measurement at one inch up and one measurement at four inches up. Hopefully you can see that. That's the hole that we're going to leave for turning all of this monstrosity inside out. So what you might have to do is just kind of, you want to just fold this out of the way because you do not want to sew any of that. If you get any of that in your seams, it won't turn inside out and then we'll probably both cry. So. Just make sure that you fold it out of the way. I'm going to go ahead and clip right here so this is stable. And then the other side, just take this and kind of fold it out of the way. And then go ahead and clip your sides. Now we're going to take this to the sewing machine. We are going to make sure that you are back stitching. Um, at your one inch and I'm going to take you to the sewing machine with me so that you can see how this monstrosity gets sewn But we're going to start at the one inch so all the way around come back to where we marked with the four inch And then back stitch. So let's go do that. All right, so we have got our monstrosity over here <laughs> I am going to change my stitch length to a 2.5 I'm going to start where that inch mark is you're just going to have to be careful as you're sewing to make sure that those, the parts that we kind of like folded over don't come back and you don't want to accidentally sew on those. 
So holding on to my string, my thread. I'm just gonna sew all the way around using a quarter of an inch seam allowance. All right, so we did it. We sewed it all the way around. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna try and get this out. <laughs> uh, it's just gonna get harder and harder the more fabric you put in there. But I'm kind of grabbing the inside material and just kind of pulling it out. Be careful, you don't wanna bust those stitches. If you find the more difficult it gets, the bigger the hole you need to leave yourself, then go ahead and do that. Give yourself another half an inch. Oh, but I'm trying to keep it as small as I can so that it doesn't show up too bad later on. All right, go ahead and straighten all this out and then take it to your ironing board. Go ahead and press the edges. Again, it does not matter what the rest of this thing looks like because we're gonna be turning it inside out. We just need to make sure that our corners and our edges are all straight. So go do that. All right, so now we've got the letter. One panel, two panel, three panels. It's all ironed, all ready to go. We're gonna get our last panel set. So it'll be your card slots and your gray material. We're gonna do this a little bit differently. What we're gonna be doing is I have my top notch and I have my bottom notch. We're going to be matching up our bottom notch to our very last zipper. So if I turn it over this way, I'm gonna just move my clips. We're gonna take this to the sewing machine and definitely base stitch this in place because we don't want it to move around with all of this fabric we've got hanging off the other end. So go ahead, base this just in place, and then we will do the very last panel. All right, so we've got this attached nice and base it on. Um, you do not and should not have another zipper on this end. We, do, we don't want a zipper on that end. But what we are gonna do is again, we're gonna take our very, very last panel, we're gonna fold it over, Hold it over, hold it over <laughs> until it looks like that. Our panel that we base stitched our zipper to is on the very bottom um, and you can't see the other bottom but there it is. Now I'm not going to lie, this is going to be difficult but we can do it. Again I'm going to go ahead and pull the layers out of my way. I am going to go ahead and grab my other panel that's going to go on the outside. I'm gonna go ahead and clip at the top first. And then I'm gonna turn it around and I'm gonna fold this out of the way and I'm gonna match up the bottom panel with the top. Alright, so we've got the top and the bottom clip. The next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to find the side that has all of my open seams. They're all over here. So I need to make my mark on this side. So from the, from the very bottom, I'm going to go ahead and measure four and a half up. We've been doing four inches, but I'm gonna go ahead and do four and a half and give myself a little extra room <laughs> to turn this inside out because it's pretty bulky right now. And then I'm gonna measure one inch up. So you should have a mark at one inch and, and a mark at uh, four and a half. And then what I'm gonna do is just kind of, it's hard to show you, but move all this mess out of my way. <laughs> and then just clip it. See, I've got everything. I kind of took it and I kind of pushed it this way to get it away from my seams. Cause I don't want, I don't want to catch that when I'm trying to sew. And I'm going to do that on both sides. I'm just going to kind of push it out of my way. And I'm going to go ahead and clip this side anyway, even though I'm not going to sew over here, just to make it, it's great. All right, now this side, I'm going to 
push all the layers out of my way like that and then go ahead and clip along your sides and you've got one gigantic <laughs> like sandwich in there it's it's huge so again we're going to take this to the sewing machine i've got my opening on the right hand side here i'm going to start here go all the way around come back to this spot and then make sure that i'm back stitching last one you guys <laughs> all right i'm gonna get my stitch length back to a two and a half i'm gonna start at that little inch mark making sure to back stitch okay and then you're gonna have to just kind of push this fabric down so that the bulk of the other stuff doesn't kind of like scooch its way in because you don't want to sew all of that right now <laughs> all right who is ready to ride the struggle bus hopefully it won't be too bad but you're almost done so yay I am just clipping off my corners so that I don't want to have those and they'll all lay flat. So my nice clip corners. All right, here it comes. <laughs> Birth that baby. Man, if there was only a way to bind this, <laughs> to get away with not having to birth all this, all of these layers out of this one hole. It's okay. It's going to look great when we get done. You guys are going to be shocked. It's going to be amazing. I, ho I hope you guys like this pattern. Again, I cannot tell you guys how many times we had this printed and how many times I've made this to make sure that it was right for you guys because I knew it was kind of like a, a more complicated pattern. Um, so I was trying to make it as easy as I could. Hopefully. <laughs> I know it's still, it's probably a little, it's still kind of difficult. Okay. I, I get that. All right. So I'm just pushing out all of the corners. Again, you guys know that you can always go to K&A Custom Fabrics Facebook page. If you guys ever have any questions, you get to a part in the video and you're just like, oh, <laughs> I can't do it. Um, you can always go on their Facebook page and ask questions. Um, we have people on there that have made the patterns uh, and that will help you in any way that you need because we want you guys to be able to make these because they are going to be awesome. I did my testers and they sold like that. So if you want to do this, if you want to buy this to be able to resell, they'll sell fast. All right, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take this to the ironing board one more time. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to iron all of the edges. Make sure that my opening is going to be pressed so that the seams are on the inside. Um, just go all the way around it. And then we're going to start putting the accordion of it all together. Let's go.